All right, guys, it is Friday. I wanted to do a little something here. Uh, I, I kind of did a video on a lot of my custom stuff I did for my dash on my two-door hardtop uh, project here. I showed a lot of the parts and pieces that were like in primer or unfinished or, you know, not bolted on the car. So I decided I'd go ahead and try to do a video on the dash and some of the interior stuff forward there uh, and, and just show some of the custom stuff I did because uh, now that the four-door body's sitting here, I can kind of show some of the stuff I did to, you know, some of you guys that are not familiar with these cars can see what I did. But anyway, so this is, uh, you know, the original 55 dash that come in the car. Uh, these are welded in, so uh, to remove one, you have to do a lot of uh, surgery. I did not remove mine. I just painted it in place, but my goal was to keep the entire car after I built it to still look like a 55 Chevy, but I wanted to customize lots of little small things, lots of little details that, you know, unless you know these cars, you're really not going to pick that stuff up. So it ended up being a whole lot of work just for even one little small thing, but the end result, I, I think, just says it all that... Anyway, I'll get you started here. We'll just start right here since this is right in my face. This is a smaller version of the original 55, 56 Chevy Bel Air steering wheel. Uh, the Bel Airs have a three spoke. Uh, the two tens and one fifties just had a two spoke, uh, but this is a three spoke. Uh, anyway, this is a smaller diameter. Now there's two versions on the market that I know of. Uh, one of them, I don't know the name of it, but it is a 15 inch. This is actually a 16 inch. The original is an 18 inch. It is very large, especially if you've got a belly like I do. And you can, you get in and out. Uh, I think I eat too many little Debbies, you know what I mean? But uh, anyway, this is a 16 inch version and I like it because there's a lot more space uh, from the horn ring out, uh, but also that extra inch, it, it makes a lot of difference with my manual steering. I still have the original steering box in the car. There's no power steering, it's all manual. Uh, now I did do an idler arm bearing conversion kit in it. And I do have some pretty wide uh, tires on the front. Those are 17 inch. But anyway, the, the when I drove this to the end of the block there a couple months ago, uh, it, it turned very well. I was very, very happy with it. it. I didn't have to put hardly any effort into it at all. But Anyway, I'm running the original automatic steering column. Uh, this uh, car was originally a power glide car, two-speed automatic. But uh, anyway, so I ended up painting the dash black. And what I've got here in the center is uh, this is the bow tie dash trim. This is what you would have got in your original 55, except uh, it would have had a cutout for a radio and the two knobs. Also the cigarette lighter over here and the headlight switch over here. So the company that makes these reproductions sells them with no holes, and so I did that, but I still have my bow ties. Now I mounted my headlight switch underneath the bottom of the dash right here, built a little bracket and it's welded to it, uh, but it it's underneath the, the dash there, so it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. I kind of like it that way. I did leave the ignition switch and the wiper switch in the factory locations as well, but anyway, the, uh, the dash itself, uh, it has a seam that comes down through right here and then it kicks over and then runs right down through that So I welded all that up Lots of people do that. It's kind of a common thing uh, Anyway, if you would have got air conditioning on your 55 Chevy as an option You would have had some chrome pods that went here that I mean they, they kind of It is reminiscent of that is what I was going for these are actually speaker pods. I have three and a half inch kicker two-way speakers in here, uh, but these are exhaust tips that I bought at Pet Boys, and I cut them and removed all the, you know, the fiberglass or whatever the heck was in there and all the stuff out of it. And I ended up taking metal uh, mesh, like screen wire basically, and I tacked it all in in the back of that. And it's actually the same mesh that I put in here in this bezel here, so it would match. But anyway, there's kicker speakers in there. Now I have a, a ring welded on the back of it with two studs sticking out so the speakers actually go over the studs and then I've got nuts uh, holding them on there. So they're very easy to replace if I blow one. But anyway, now the dash, uh, the way it's cut off here is pretty much factory, except 
I modified mine and actually made it shorter. Uh, when I mocked up the entire car, I had the garnish molding on here and everything, and I, I made sure that my garnish molding would come straight off of that dash so it would be perfectly in line. But I also gapped this. That's the reason I cut it and recapped it. I used the same gapping tool that I made for my doors and deck lid and everything, so I have the, the same gap. Um, you know, sometimes these are real, real tight, uh, and sometimes these don't line up no matter how much adjustment you give that garnish molding forward. Uh, it's, <laughs> I made sure these worked, but... Anyway, moving on to the speaker bezel here. If you got a radio back in 55, your six by nine speaker would have been behind this. And uh, their idea of surround sound in 55 was a speaker here. And then if you got a rear speaker, it went on the driver's side in the rear deck back here. So uh, I ended up cutting these six by nine openings out in the rear deck. So I have two kicker six by nines back there. And I have, you know, dual pods up here with kicker three and a halves. So I have a four speaker, you know, sound system in it now. Anyway, my chrome bezel for my speaker, my speedometer and my heater control, I had replated at a chrome shop. Uh, I actually sent it with my dad. I don't even know where the chrome place is. I sent it with my dad and uh, he was getting some of his Cougar parts replated. So I sent this with him. Uh, that was a long time ago. That was probably <laughs> six years ago, I would imagine or something, but Anyway, the, the bezel itself, uh, I ground the rivet heads off and I drilled it and tapped it to where it would take screws. But uh, anyway, this metal mesh I cut out and put in here. Now the metal mesh in this is a lot bigger opening so you can see in behind the dash. Now originally, since it did have a speaker, it does have little tiny holes in it from the factory. But now it's more open where you can see in behind there. And if you're, if you're catching that, uh, that is a 55 Chevy two-door hardtop behind that. I built a filler panel and I put it in my sheet metal brake and I bent the sides in to where if you're looking at an angle, you're still going to see a wall. So it's basically a block off plate I made back there from the original speaker mount. So it still bolts in just like your factory 6x9 would. But anyway, I did a 55 Chevy Hot Wheel and I cut the side off of it and I used washers for wheels and it's all panel bonded on and I went around the whole edge of it with sandpaper rolled up and it's all molded into that. And I just did it all flat black. I like subtle stuff. I don't like anything. Uh, I don't like to paint stuff wild crazy colors where it sticks out and like grabs your eyeballs. I like subtle. I like people to not notice things. Um, you know, if it's pretty dark outside, nobody's ever gonna see that and I'm cool with that. I'm not gonna put a light in there and I'm not gonna detail paint that car and all that crap. I just don't want it jumping out at you. So anyway, it's got a filler panel back there so you can't see in behind the dash and everything. Now originally the Bel Air script here is gold anodized from the factory and also the uh, horn button center here, the little emblem is supposed to be gold. The truth is the aftermarket gold stuff, it just doesn't last. It tarnishes pretty quickly. It has for me anyway. So I changed everything out to chrome. Uh, the you know, normally would have gold. I went with all chrome stuff, but if this car was original, I would obviously do all gold, but you know, this car is a custom, so uh, I changed it. Um, now my clock, it is actually a movement from Hobby Lobby, a little bitty square movement that takes a double A battery. I took an old clock that I'd actually found on the ground beside a 56 Bel Air and a salvage. It had been in the ground for a long time. It was laying on top, but it was really, really rusty. So I cut up the housing to where that movement would fit in the back of it. And I used a, a new, you know, reproduction clock lens. But if you see the bow tie background, it's actually this dash trim, my old pieces of dash trim, and I bent it up and put it in there. It's actually has an edge raised up all the way around. So uh, it's almost like the factory panel. If you've ever taken one of those apart, it's kind of domed. So. Uh, anyway, it takes a double-A battery, and I think that's kind of cool. Now, that bow tie dash trim piece that I put in there, I also have it in my heater slide control unit here, and also have it in the speedometer. So, everything's all satin black, so it, you know, it's, again, subtle, but I like it. Gives it a little bit of detail, and it's just one of those things that, you know, I spend all the time doing that, but nobody else is going to have that. So, I think that's awesome. The speedometer itself, um, 
I put a new lens in it. And of course I had it all taken apart, but I built that rear panel out of dash trim and it has sides that are bent up just like the factory piece that goes in there if you've ever taken one apart. And I even have the little rubber uh, cushions that go on each end of the folded up piece. I notched it and slid those original cushions right back on there. So it's just like it's supposed to be. Now they have arrows cut out in the, in the housings for, uh, you know, your turn signal indicator. I ended up welding those up and I drilled a hole in it and then I'm, it's, the hole is the same diameter as that LED light. And then I have a washer tack welded on the back that the LED fits in and that made it fit flush uh, so the lens wouldn't hit it because these LED little round lights are domed. But anyway, so I changed it to LED because I don't know about you guys, but I am the world's worst, especially in one of these cars, of forgetting to turn the turn signal off if it doesn't cancel. I'll drive for miles down the road with turn signal on, so, and it's mainly because they're not very bright. These dudes are bright, so I'm glad of that. Um, I use my jeweler saw, uh, I used to be a jeweler, so I used my jeweler saw to cut out the opening for the odometer in there. And then I put a red LED right there for the bright light indicator. That is where it goes originally, uh, and it also is red. Uh, originally, these cars had a bow tie that would light up red for your bright light indicator, so I kept it red. Now, I did change my needle color to orange on the clock and in the Speedo because I bought a triple gauge set of autometer, well, two and sixteenths gauges, and I kept the same theme. These are black background, white numbers, orange needles with a chrome bezel. So they pretty much are like they're supposed to be. I'm, I've never been a fan of... You know, another set of gauges in the car somewhere, like a triple gauge pot under here that's like a white face. Like this stuff is originally a black face. A white face just doesn't go, in my opinion. That, it's just my opinion. But anyway, so I went with all three uh, autometers. I have oil, water, and uh, volts. But anyway, I made a triple gauge pod. This is the original A-pillar trim that will go up here. And uh, I used muffler pipe. I used pipe caps on the back, and I used pieces of round tubing uh, for the wires to pass through to step them off there. So that triple gauge set will go in to that, and I'll have a triple gauge pod. One of my uh, features that I really like, I think that's kind of cool. I like to, uh, I, I like the gauge pods from my G-Body days because, you know, you can really keep your eyes on the road because your gauges are right there instead of looking down under the dash, you know what I mean? But Anyway, I drilled holes in the A-pillar here, and I have rubber grommets to go in there for the wiring to come out of. I still got a lot of wires to run in there, but those are all electric. Anyway, uh, what else? I do have the indicator in the cluster here for the, uh, that's correct for my transmission because I have an overdrive, 700R4. Now, originally, a power glide on these 55s was park, neutral, drive, low, reverse. So... Uh, they do the companies do make these for the different trannies that you can put in there and that's really awesome nice detail thing there so I do have the uh, Electric windshield wiper motor and is an original for a tri-5 I'm not sure exactly what year my electric wiper motor is, but it is one of the three years uh, And it does have the push button in the middle of it and that button I have a, a little switch screwed to the back of this that when you push on that, it activates my electric windshield wiper motor. Uh, windshield wiper washer motor, I should say. <laughs> this rig. Now, I have a full uh, explanation video on this setup on my under playlists on my channel. So you can click on playlists and you'll find, I think it's Tri-5 Tech Tips or something like that. Um, anyway, this is a $12 Universal Anco washer pump. And uh, I remodified all that. If you want a, more information on that, check out the video. Um, but anyway, it works when you push on it. It will uh, basically put the fluid on the windshield like it's supposed to. Now, this is an Autotronic Eye. This was an option you could get in 55 on your car. Um, anyway, this, I, I could not find one for a Chevrolet on eBay. All I found was for a Cadillac. And uh, I bought it because the head here is two pieces and it, it screws together to the base. So it's technically three pieces when you take one of these all apart. The head is the same exact part number as the Chevy. So this is correct for the car. The base, I got it for a Cadillac and it didn't contour the dash. You know, the dashes aren't the same in the Cadillac. So I ended up having to make my own 
mount. Now I did it just like original because the bottom of that Autotronic Eye has a, uh, a pocket up in there and it's teardrop shaped. So I had to build this exactly to fit up in that like factory. But uh, I ended up using a piece of muffler pipe and I actually stepped on it on the ground. I stepped on it to oval it and then I split it one side with a cutoff wheel and I squeezed it together and welded it and that's how I got my teardrop shape. So then I set it up in here and I traced around it and then I cut the dash out with the fine blade uh, jigsaw and then basically sunk that piece down in there just a little bit and welded it all the way around and molded it in. So uh, now this was just the head that I bought. I did not get all the, you know, all the parts with it. Uh, so what I ended up doing was buying a shift light, a little adjustable tube shift light that you can get at Summit for your RPMs. And I took it all apart and put the chipboard down inside of it and mounted it and everything. So it's now a shift light. So when I get my designated shift point, uh, it will light up and I'll be able to see it glare off the windshield right there. Now I've got the RPM indicator right here. It's adjustable. So uh, the reason I did that is I used to be, uh, I used to go to the midnight drags quite a bit at Tulsa and race. And every once in a while at the midnight drags, not only is it dark outside, uh, you get lined up beside somebody that has really loud exhaust or, you know, their open header. You can't hear your engine to shift, so a shift light is a must. So, uh, when I first started building this car, I was all about, you know, taking it to the track and racing it and still driving it. And now I'm more, uh, in tune to just drive it. Uh, I may take it to the drags, uh, just to kind of see what it'll run, but, uh, anyway. So the glove box door is actually extended. Originally, these have an ashtray right here that flipped down. Uh, I removed the uh, ashtray from its, its main rear piece, and uh, I welded it to the side of the glove box door, but I actually have modified it with sheet metal, and it has the fold all the way around, so it, it looks like a factory glove box door. But I took the divider out, I fabbed up this piece to look stock so it still takes the little rubber uh, cushions here so your glove box doesn't rattle. Um, got the correct tab down here that you know would normally be there. And anyway, I resheet metal the whole back of this glove box. Uh, it does have the correct, this piece here has an angle to it and it's the same angle that I used here because uh, normally you know this would stop like right here. Also has two little cup holder indents in it that were pretty useless. Uh, I mean, maybe for a coffee cup, but anyway, so I, that's all sheet metaled in there. Now my little latch here for my glove box latch, uh, this bracket that screws on the back is just a piece of C-channel basically is all it is, or a U. And I used some tubing and cut it to fit in that pocket right there to make this, you know, one solid piece and uh, smoothed it all out and painted it. It's one of them details that no one's ever going to notice. Uh, I drilled speed holes in my latch bracket here. This is basically the stop uh, for the glove box so it doesn't fully extend out. Uh, I did put 12 point ARPs in everything. I had to cut all of these down so they wouldn't you know put high spots in the glove box door. So that was kind of fun. But you know I have a 12 volt outlet in here and I got a little Kenwood CD player in here but this is a steel panel that I, I made and put in here, and I used a texture coating on this. This is actually Duplicolor Bedliner aerosol on here. And then when it dried, I used a Scotch-Brite and lightly scuffed it. And this is Sim brand uh, interior trim paint called Warm Gray. Uh, it's designed to go on like plastic, wood, fiberglass, that type of stuff. But I did gray because if it had the original glove box liner in it, it would be a gray felt or a velvet, you know, lined glove box. So that was kind of why I did it gray. But anyway, I have my original heater box in here. This is actually a deluxe heater. You could get a standard or deluxe. This is the deluxe. Uh, I did take it all apart and smoothed it all up with body filler and then repainted everything. Uh, I took a quarter panel crest, an original. It's supposed to be gold anodized and it was all faded out. And I panel bonded it on there and then uh, edged it in so it looks like it's embossed in the steel but since I put my cup holder assembly in here you don't really see it anyway but it's there <laughs> where am I at on time I know I'm getting low here 19 minutes wow I'm already over it's gonna be a two video part I guess anyway so this is a Kleenex dispenser uh, reproduction um, 
anyway, this was a option you could get in 55 for like a Kleenex, like tissue. And I basically built my own mounts. Man, this thing is dusty. I forgot to clean that. Anyway, I built my own mounts, welded them in the dash, and uh, because originally these would be at an angle, when you kick it out, it would be setting up at an angle. So if you did cup holders, you'd spill your drink. So uh, I plated it in the back, and I plated it in the slot in the top that the Kleenex goes through, and then I hole sawed it, and I put in these little shallow cup holders that I got off eBay. I went with real shallow ones because I didn't want anything hanging down below it because you would see it. But anyway, I'd remove the rivets. This is riveted on. And I use little 632 stainless steel Allen buttons on there. And I think I got some little bitty nylock lock nuts on there. Uh, I used, uh, I think it was like 2006 Honda Galaxy Gray Metallic or Pearl, I don't remember. It's base coat, clear coat, and that is what I use for my accent color on a lot of this stuff. It, uh, it very much reminds me of the original gray hammer tone finish that would be on this. Uh, so I did the cup holder assembly. I did the heater box. I even did my screens for my kick panels here for my fresh air into the car. Uh, I actually welded square nuts on here on both sides so it will take 12-point ARP 1032s to hold the screens on as well. But uh, I used that accent color on the brackets for the pull knobs for the uh, cowl vents. And I used it on my pedal assemblies here, uh, the brake pedal arm. I ended up drilling speed holes in it, and they're stepped from big to small, and then I chamfered them as well on both sides. Put a little silver paint in there with a brush. Did the same thing to the gas pedal rod. I have all my throttle unhooked because I'm going to pull the engine out. Anyway, I flattened off the sides of this because this is round. Uh, I flattened off both sides, and then I drilled speed holes in it, and I chamfered those and put silver paint in them as well so it matches. But I like that galaxy gray for an accent color. It really... Uh, kind of reminds me of what it could be original. Um, what else? Uh, let's see. Where am I at here? I already covered all that. So I've got the garnish moldings back here for the rear. I've got one of them here. Uh, this is the interior garnish molding. After I upholster it, I'll be putting this on right here. And it screws on. But... If you got your car, uh, the factory two-tone paint design, these 55 Bel Air's two-tone, right here where these holes are, down to here, down through here, and then down. So this part right here and the roof would be a different color than your lower area here and all the front of the car. So I originally had painted this car with black base coat with jade green pearl in it. And so it was black. It looked like all black, but when the sunlight, it was green. But the clear coat solvent popped on me, so I ended up having to take it all down, and I didn't have the money to buy more green paint, so I just did the car all black. Now, I am going to do that later, uh, because I'll get tired of this all black after a while, probably a year or two, and then I'll go back and do my green. So uh, that's what I plan to do there. Now, the garnish molding, when it's put on there, if you got your car two-toned, your garnish molding was always from the factory, just one color. So you have a two-tone break right here to here. Like this would be black, this would be green. Your garnish molding solid color right there, which would be black. So what I did uh, is two-tone it. It, it. Well, I'm going to two-tone it, but I actually used another pair of upper paint dividers that go on the quarter panel from a sedan. They were both damaged, but I cut off the top pieces, and I reformed these, which was a lot of work. Um, because, you know, anytime you got beads rolled in something that thin and you try to get a tight bend like that, it, it creases and kinks and everything. So I had to go through there and work and work and work on that. But I've got both made, but they will be double-sided taped on there like that. So that is going to hide my two-tone when it goes up here. And it will be exactly in line with the paint divider that bolts onto the quarter panel, which is right here. Now I'm going to paint the inlay on that black so it'll match this. But... Of course, this paint divider is for the other side, but it would, you know, go like that. But anyway, just something. Uh, I have never seen anybody do that with stainless trim. I've seen a lot of guys, you know, just put the two-tone line and pretty much leave it. I've also seen guys use chrome uh, pinstriping, vinyl pinstriping, and put a little stripe on there, which is kind of nice. It's better than just having it two-tone broke with a tape line, but just my opinion. But anyway, guys, I'm pretty proud of it. I mean, this thing is... Uh, 
uh, you know, once you get all that stuff together, it just makes a huge difference. And, and you can see uh, what I was going for. And, you know, to anybody that looks in here, it's just going to look like an original, like it came that way. And it's really not. It's just a lot to it. But anyway, I'll show you on the four-door here the seam I was talking about that's right here that I filled. And I'll also show you the, the glove box opening. Um, so the the dash you can see the seam right here coming down and then it kicks over and then goes all the way down so uh, you know just modified that and then your ashtray goes in this pocket right here so your glove box is narrower so I ended up removing this paint divider and uh, this edge is rolled under here and here so I ended up uh, I cut this out actually wide and then uh, basically got under there with some flat jaw pliers and I got that bend in there so it matches so just lots of little tedious work and then I built the corner pieces from scratch to put in there but at the end it still looks you know stock which I kind of like so but anyway that is some of the stuff I did uh, just to the dash uh, so now I'll cover the firewall but thanks for watching